In today's video, we're going to be looking at the oscillate function. Now, oscillate is typically used inside of a 2D contour tool path, and it's used to move the tool up and down as you cut in order to spread the, the wear over the full length of a flute. Uh, so we're going to explore that, some of the settings and their effect on a tool path. And as well, we're going to look at two other tool paths beyond 2D contour that you can use the oscillate function inside of. All right, so let's hop right into this here. So in this uh, demo, what we've got going on, we've got this piece of material here and we're cutting just the one side. So we're taking an end mill, just doing a rip down one side and let's assume we're doing hundreds or even thousands of these parts. So as we go through a typical 2D contour and look at the resulting tool path, you'll see right here, let's get into a right view. If we cut all of these parts with this tool path, all of that cutting load is going to be applied to this section of end mill right there. So we're only applying all the cutting to this one section. We're not getting any load up in here in this part of the flute. So we're wasting that part of the end mill because this, this section right here is obviously going to get worn out and we'll have to replace end mills or even uh, come up with different tool paths that adjust the Z level uh, separately. But we can do all this inside of the tool path itself and not have to worry about that. And that's where our oscillate function comes in. So oscillate is found underneath the contour type pull down on the cut parameters page. And once you select it, we've got a few more options over here that will help us define this oscillation move. Now, a lot of these are self-explanatory. You know, linear is basically, do we want zigzags, you know, hard zigzags, or do we want to get more of a slight curve to that up and down motion? Again, personal preference, what one do you want to use? Depends on how much you're going to be going up and down. Uh, if you're doing a lot of traversing, then maybe high speed is better. If you're only going to do kind of one, one uh, progression along the entire part, then maybe linear is fine. The setting down here at the bottom for distance along is pretty straightforward as well. So that's the distance between the changes in direction. So no matter which one you pick, you're still defining, you know, how far you're going to move before you switch directions. The value here for maximum depth though might trip you up a bit given the display here. So it looks like it's saying the maximum depth of this full oscillation move would be at 0 0.5, but this is in addition to the depth the tool path is already going. So in the example here, let's go to our linking parameters page. You can see I'm set to cut at negative one eighth of an inch. And I've also got, uh, so eighth of an inch is the thickness of the material we're cutting. I also have breakthrough turned on and I'm cutting 50 thou past the bottom of my part. So right now my tool path will go minus 175 on its own. So eighth of an inch plus 50 thou breakthrough minus 175. This will be in addition to, so if my tool right now at this, using this as a demo here, this is at minus 175. If I oscillate a half of an inch, it's going to go half of an inch deeper than the tool path is already set to go. So that can be a problem. And I'm going to accept this value here, just the default, and we'll see the problem that pops up. I'll green check. And I get a note about a flute length warning. So basically what this is saying is my flute of the tool that I've got selected is not long enough to accommodate the oscillate that I've told it to do. So the tool that I do have is only got a half of an inch of flute. And if I'm already cutting at negative 175, and I'm oscillating an additional half of an inch, that's putting me down 675, which we'll be able to see in this back plot. Notice the value there for Z, minus 175 at the start. As I get to the middle, minus 675. And if I go into a right view, you can easily see that I'm cutting beyond the flutes. I'm even up into the shank of the tool. Okay, so one thing to be aware of in here is this is not the maximum depth of the operation. It's the maximum and while it is the size or the amplitude, I guess is the best way to put this of the oscillate. So if I've got, I think a safe value here will be 300,000. So we'll go 300,000. And this distance here, let's just get some, some uh, motion here. So I'm going to go with three quarters of an inch, probably more than what's needed. And there you can see the oscillate results. And from the right side, So there with those values for the oscillate, I'm not getting below my flutes. I didn't get that warning and that's a much safer motion. Uh, again, so look at the difference here between linear and high speed. Let's hop into a high speed. Look at this from the right side. 
you can see we're just getting more of a, of a curve now. Uh, and if you are concerned as well, so those will be, let me go into our analyzed toolpath. The default, we're going to be getting a lot of G01s in all these, these, even though they are curves. You will have varying results if you try to filter this. I find with trying to filter these into arcs, you really need to give this a lot of extra leeway in the tolerance of the toolpath, which then may result in uh, less than optimal results in uh, X, Y location, depending on the contour you're trying to cut. So let's look at a different scenario. So I talked about different tool paths and I'll look at this part here. It's the same sort of thing, except we've got a little bit of a, a curve to this surface now. So if we were to hop into a typical contour tool path, and if we started to do some chaining here, even though we are not doing a straight flat contour, we can still chain this top edge green check and you'll see that uh, on our cut parameters page since we've changed something that's not flat in Z we no longer get the option to oscillate so we could cut this as a 3d contour and we could get that motion but we're no longer able to oscillate so what if you have a part like this and you want you want to oscillate you want to spread that that cutter wear across your entire flute so that's what we're going to look at our next toolpath option and that's going to be in the multi-axis world. And the first one we're going to look at here is curve. So here in the curve toolpath, I've already built this operation out. Same tool, half inch ML that's got half inch long flute cut pattern. We're just grabbing that curve down on the top edge of our part. And as far as tool axis control goes, we've got this set to a plane. And we are set to the top plane basically because the wall of this part is in fact flat. So that helps things out a little bit there. We've got our tip control set to the selected curve, but we're going 175 past that. It's the same as our other operation was doing. And then notice down here at the bottom, some familiar fields oscillate. So I've got this turned on, high speed, maximum depth. Notice I'm a little bit smaller here. I'm going with quarter of an inch instead of the 300 we had before. And I've got the distance set 2.75. Again, the same value we were using before. So let's go ahead and look at this tool path. And we'll notice we drop down and let's get in a view in here a little bit closer. You can see the tool is in fact following that 3D curve while still oscillating. Now the difference here with this curve five axis is it's not going to hold your hand as much. So if we give this a value that's going to exceed our flute cutting length, uh, it doesn't really know, nor does it care. It's leaving it on you. Let's go into a right view to make sure that you're not trying to cut material with the shank of your tool. Okay, so that's scenario number one with curve. We've got this curved surface. It's normal to our top plane, and that was pretty straightforward. What if we had a part like this? So this part now is the same sort of shape, except for that wall is now angled. So curve will still work here. Uh, the only change that we need to make is just simply defining a different plane to cut from. So this time I'm set to five axis instead of four. And the plane is now set to a custom plane that I created that was rotated the same angle as that face. The oscillation movement, and there you can see we're now on an angle. Following that 3D curve and still oscillating along that edge. So that's how we can use the curve five axis toolpath to oscillate. And there's one more toolpath we're going to look at, and that is Swarf. So let's bring up this next part. Now, again, similar part was the previous ones. The difference here, if we zoom in on this wall, notice how the wall over here is angled out and at the middle, it's angled back in. So we can no longer cut this from a single plane. We have to change the orientation of the tool as we're cutting along. So we should also point out, let me just go down into this Swarf toolpath. Before I click on this toolpath, let me get the pull down from the multi-axis gallery. Notice there's a Swarf at the top in pattern, and there's a Swarf down here at the bottom in application. We are after this guy down here, the application Swarf. So as we work through this, same thing, half inch end mill, the same one as before, half inch long flute. Our cut pattern, we are set to cut a surface and the surface we selected is in fact that side face. Our tool axis control, obviously we need to be set to a full five axis cut in order to move back and forth and up and down all at the same time. 
For collision control, we are set to have our tip control set to the lower rail, 50 thou below, so we get the same uh, resulting toolpath as we had previous, where the tool is just below the bottom of our part. And then again, down here at the bottom, we've got this similar oscillate function here. Oscillate we can turn on, high speed. Here we've got it called amplitude, so I think this makes much more sense calling it amplitude as opposed to maximum depth, because it's telling us you know, how big of, a, of an oscillate are we going to get, how big is the amplitude of that oscillation. Okay, so with all that, we'll green check it. And let's hop into a back plot of this tool path. So you notice the angle the tool is on as we start. Notice it is oscillating as it goes through its motion, and it's still tipping in the opposite direction to maintain contact with that wall. All the while, it's still oscillating up and down and spreading that load over the entire length of those flutes. So there we have it three different ways to oscillate inside of MasterCam.